Hey guys, this is a walkthrough and exploration of the keep. This first video is going to be the main keep, and then the next video is going to be um, the infested version of this keep, something that your players can take over. Uh, this first level, this is the first floor. This is the great room floor. Uh, it's got a bunch of lighting from the new foundry lighting system, and uh, it's got uh, ambient noises like fireplaces crackling, you know, dripping water in places like bathroom. And uh, we're going to take a walk through this here in a second. Um, and you can see there's, you know, just like a lot of really good effects. The walls are all in place. You can certainly change these when you start it yourself. Um, but let's go ahead and take a uh, little walk through of it. Like I said, this first level is free. And um, I put some NPCs in here. This particular spot in the foyer that will reflect up above. I am using multi-level token hotspots. They are entirely optional, but um, I do use them for teleporting, which can make things a lot easier. And I also will uh, show your, your users um, or NPCs reflected to different levels in some places where I, I do some creative level type stuff. So let's go ahead and enter the main room. There's a couple of things in here. Um, you can't hear it on this audio, but uh, there's some fireplace stuff going on. Uh, there's a staircase down that's hidden behind some curtains. You may or may not want to expose that to your, your folks. There's a little torture room in here. It's sort of one area of the basement. There's another one. Here you can see some bars and some prison cells or some dungeon cells. And here, uh, there's also a, uh, a hidden compartment or hidden place where you can find out that somebody escaped or you yourself can escape. It goes down into a hole. Uh, notice these are just regular um, journal entries. There's nothing special about them except that your users need to have permission to interact with them. It's the same journal entry everywhere. We'll go into the kitchen. You would hear crackling fire noises here as well. And there's a room tucked away here. Lots of areas. I try to make these maps so that you can have a lot of different plot devices, NPCs that you introduce, that you have to go looking for. Here we are in the basement. There's a lot of um, dripping water noises down here. This is essentially storage. And then this is a really interesting thing. This is a crypt. And uh, what's special about this crypt is it can change depending on what plot elements you want to introduce or not. And uh, right now I've got a PNG that is sitting on top of this crypt and it's, here you go, you can see it's now visible. It was invisible. So, uh, but that's not your only option. You have this idea of, hey, there's a ladder underneath and it goes somewhere, maybe a jumping off point or um, some sort of plot that you want to do. Um, but there's other alternatives to that. So it could be a treasure in there. Uh, and there's another one that uh, it's a coffin. So maybe this is a vampire's uh, layer. You'll notice you just walk over a hotspot, you click on the journal entry, and it just teleports you to where you're supposed to go. There are other doors, other things to explore. Behind this curtain, there's actually a, um, a secret passage behind the throne, essentially. And I'm going to enable that secret passage here and let you see what's behind it. Now, this one is an automatic teleporter just because there's not a lot of space to work with. And here it opens up into a bedroom up above that your, uh, your people can explore. Uh, 
And I'll show you something interesting with that bedroom a little bit later as well. So we'll keep walking through the keep, trying to build too many walls in places like um, tables, just because sometimes you may want to make it more accessible. I don't know that we have the same opinion on where we should be able to access things. You can also use modules to make it a difficult terrain to move through certain areas. And we're just going around the bottom floor. Here's the, the bathrooms. And we'll take this staircase up for right now. There's a couple of routes up to the next level. Here in a hallway, you can see paintings on the wall. Here's a bedroom that you could potentially use. I spend a lot of time on the detail with these scenes just to try to make it as interesting and believable for your, uh, for your players as possible. Really, the goal is to make them just really enjoy these maps. And you'll see, I. I'm taking you through a route because this is how, at least when I designed it, how I intended for you to be able to take your players through it. It's not, it's a circuitous route. It lets you introduce things along the way, introduce battles, let them choose um, from one or more paths. And this just shows you that that staircase leads down to the first level. So there's two ways up. Here you can see a couple of NPCs there. I put them there for a reason. You'll notice they're over on the right side here. They're reflected up to this level. So even though you're at, a, at another scene, you can still see any guards or, or players that are still down there. This is the ballroom. This is an important room, especially when we get into the ghost uh, version or the, the uh, infested version of the keep. Um, there's gonna be a lot that we can do here. I designed this ballroom to be a place where you can have a boss fight or you could have like a large party and a lot of NPC exchanges, learn a lot of information. There's, you know, again, more ambient noises as you walk through here, even though I don't have the audio on for this. Here's a large library where you can have any number of interesting things hidden, clues. There's a desk. Just more interesting things along the way. Here's a large door that you could have locked that actually leads to a very special room. This is a room that's hard to get to um, unless you know the way. And here we're in this, this one tower. And as that room goes up, uh, I'll show you some interesting things here. So here we are in a treasure room and that may be the destination you want your users to take. And up from the treasure room is the top of this tower. But let's say that you aren't just interested in the treasure room. Let's say that you're looking for something else. Well, here I've got another transparent PNG and this has become a wizard's room where maybe that's a teleport point. Maybe there's something interesting or necessary for your, for your party to find. And if you go up to the next level, I do something similar here where um, above that wizard's room, you could create something else. In this case, it's a telescope and some other interesting, potentially interesting things that you can find there. This is just how I try to make extended utility out of these maps. You may use it for a treasure room one day and then with the next party that comes through, you may decide to use it for something different. It's actually another staircase that leads up from the ballroom. Now this next level and like that wizard's room and even the basement, those are all Patreon elements. So you want to get those pretty cheap. It's three bucks. You get this map and the, the infested uh, keep and all the other maps that I've made. So hopefully you stop by my Patreon and pick them up. There's just a lot of playability in these upper floors. 
Um, this may end up being a base that your your party takes over. Here's like a bunch of servant quarters and you know guards, things like that. Um, there's same ambient noises here. This is sort of the servant's work area. You can hear the stove sizzling, for example. Up above, we've got I don't know, a bit of a guard lounge area, if you will. And then outside of that, we've got an NPC looking down on the level below. Again, we're projecting NPCs around, so it looks like you can see them from different levels. This is the battlement level. We're going up now to the top of the towers. You can see that there. You can see the NPCs down on all the different levels being reflected up. Just to help glue everything together, make it feel like one seamless experience. Uh, I will note that these ladders will take you uh, up and down in this area. Uh, to go down, you click on the journal entry. This is the captain of the guards room, and then this is where the guards barracks are housed. Um, but yeah, you click on the journal entry to go down, but because it's sitting on top of each other, you walk onto it in order to go up. So if you walk onto it, it'll automatically transport you up to the next level where you'll find some ballista, some defensive capabilities, And we're almost done exploring the entire mansion, or the entire keep, sorry. Uh, here you've got the armory, which you can put behind a locked door. And then you've got the forge here, with a nice crackling fire, ready to make some interesting weapons. Um, this is the garden area. I will point out that that, um, that center circle is actually uh, semi-transparent. It sees down below. It's a skylight to the ballroom. And then I told you I would show you this one last room here. Uh, because I like to be able to introduce plot devices, and this is a good room to do it because of the access to the throne room, You'll see that I have another transparent PNG that I can toggle on and off here as well. And it makes it a murder scene. So maybe everything was fine when you initially walked in, but your party finds out later that there's been a murder. Um, this place has obviously been looted. And perhaps somebody got there through the uh, secret entrance you don't know. So plenty of places to introduce plot and to either have skirmishes or whatever else drives your story. So hopefully you enjoyed it. That's the, uh, the main keep. In the next video, I will uh, show you the, the infested version of this. So we're gonna wreck this, this keep and put some other surprises into it and let your guys go and figure it out. Uh, thanks so much. And